So I did something that I don't think I've ever, I've never done this before. And to be honest, it kind of freaked me out because this is something that I've had by my side for you don't even realize like how long. So to actually give this thing up to where I'm not gonna be without, I'm gonna be without this for several days. I ain't gonna lie, it kinda, it kinda, it kinda made me feel ill. What I had to give up, what I had to let go of was my, my MacBook Pro. Yeah, my MacBook Pro. And for, for many of you, maybe if, uh, you know, if this is just something for homework and for leisure, watching movies, it's probably not that big a deal. But for me, like being an, an online entrepreneur, an online business owner, like giving up your MacBook Pro, I, it's almost like giving up your wife. Um, I'm sorry, babe, I love you. I would never give you up. No, so I actually had to surrender my MacBook Pro and to be without it uh, for four days. I think, has it been four days? No, oh my gosh, it's been like five days, that's insane. Uh, anyway, it's done, so I'm actually heading to the Apple store right now to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and the only reason why I could give it up is because I have a new iMac, which if you checked out some of my latest videos, you've seen uh, the new office. So I had an iMac, you know, where I could work on that, so that's good. But man, I, it's just weird. Like, I am so much more productive on my MacBook Pro because I've been so used to it. Yeah, so anyway, but um, that has nothing to do with today's topic. Uh, obviously, if you read the title, read the headline, no. Today I want to talk about failure but not our failure or my failure or your failure i want to talk about when somebody else thinks that you're going to fail and how do you deal with that how do you cope or how do you know when to move on or how do you know to actually listen to make sure that what they're telling you is good advice and advice that you should keep or take or accept or reject and continue to do what you want to do but anyway We'll get to that here in a second. I gotta head inside and find out where my, what the status of my MacBook Pro is. Let's go take a look. All right, so I'm waiting here at the uh, one of the genius bars, I guess, to so have my MacBook Pro delivered to me. Cannot wait. But while I'm waiting, I just thought, you know, where, where is this story coming from? Why do I want to do this vlog? Uh, first, I just want to start with a story just so you can understand, like, why. Why would I would even talk about this or why am I bringing this up? So, if you watched some of my previous videos, you know a little bit about my background. I was a financial advisor. I had started with a, a company that is no longer around. Uh, they ended up selling out to Wachovia, which then sold out to Wells Fargo. So, I started with this brokerage firm, was with them for five years, and never thought that I would leave. Uh, they were sold out, so it, it kind of, I guess, gave me no choice uh, to do that. But what I, what, about that story that you don't know is that I got hired by a guy that I respected. Um, I interned with him, he offered me a uh, part-time job while I was in college, and he's the one that basically gave me the job offer uh, after I graduated. So for me to leave, and that was a big deal, because I wasn't just leaving a company, I, I was leaving him. And from somebody that was, he wasn't just like my boss, he was almost like a father figure to me. I mean, I had no one to really, I, I think I've talked about this in other videos, you know, having to have a mentor, you know, somebody to uh, look up to and give you guidance on. I didn't have anybody like that in my life. I mean, he was that guy. And I uh, worked with him for five years, but he was in a financial position where he was not leaving. Like he, and he, he, did, he shouldn't have to leave. And I knew that he was doing the best for him. And at that point in time, I had to make a very tough decision and do what I felt was best for me. Was it a self decision? You know, we could argue that, but at the end of the day, sometimes you have to be selfish. It's about yourself, about your family, and what's going to be the best, you know, for you. As long as you don't burn too, you know, too many bridges. But in that whole process, so I made a really tough decision of leaving. So I'm leaving the firm that I, that I started with, my career with. I'm leaving the firm uh, that had given me my start. I'm leaving my mentor, you know, my father figure. And uh, about that whole experience, what I remember was not just him, but uh, several people in that office that I respected, that I trusted, that were telling me that by me leaving this firm and co-founding, basically starting my own investment firm, they told me that I was making the worst decision of my life. That I was going to regret this, and I, I'll never, I'll never forget those words. You're making the worst decision of your life, the worst decision of your career, and those words stuck with me. Uh, and 
not that I was offended, but I was I was hurt because there, and we'll we'll talk more about that in a second. But just imagine though that you're having a father figure, a mentor, people that you trust and respect that you've been working with for you know five years of your life, and they're telling you that basically you know you you're you're an idiot. You know whatever you think you're doing it ain't gonna work out, and you're gonna screw up. But uh, that's what I did. And I just want to like kind of how do you how do you unpack that? How do you actually uh, deal with that when you have somebody that you trust and you respect is telling you something that you want to believe them, you want to trust them, but you know in your gut that what you're doing is the right thing, and that's tough. Sometimes your gut fails you, and you know I I made a few mistakes, so there was definitely I listened. Like I heard it, I didn't let it affect my decision. I still did what I, I knew I had to do. But still, like, you know, definitely there's some self-doubts start creeping in. You know, am I really doing the right thing? Do I know what I'm doing? And so, yeah, that's what I want to talk about here. But uh, I think I got my back for Coco. So let's see what I got going on, and we'll talk more about that here in a second. All right, I got my baby back. What? I've missed her. I really have. I feel much better now. I feel much more secure. So as I was saying, I... Anytime you gotta say no to a, a father figure, a mentor, a parent, that's hard. Like that's that's hard to do. And I, I mean, I can remember just how nervous I was. Like I was a nervous wreck. Like when this was going down, down. I, I just I couldn't sleep. Uh, it just it was horrible. But I knew that I had to do it. So somehow I I, I got the courage. I wrote a letter, um, just kind of just sharing everything, and you know, and I told him, yeah. Like I still think about that day and how nervous I was, uh, and not just nervous. Like I knew that I was doing the right thing, but there was still a part of me that felt that I was letting him down, letting everybody down. Like everybody there gave me my start, and to have to to walk away from that. I mean, it was it was, it was really hard. But hearing those comments that I'm making the biggest mistake of my life, it hurt knowing that I was leaving, but it hurt because they knew what I had done. They knew what I had accomplished. And to hear those comments from someone that I trusted, it felt as if they stopped believing in me. And I think that was the hardest, the hardest thing to swallow about that whole experience. And I think anytime you hear that from someone that you trust, it hurts. It hurts a lot. So I think one way to just kind of unpack this, if you have someone that is giving you advice or saying some comments that that, that just leaves you just with a bad feeling, I want, to, I want you to ask these three questions. There's three questions I think that will kind of just help put it in perspective so that you understand just to help you kind of dissect this and to see does it really make sense um you know just how do you unpack this so let's take a look what these three questions are so the first question you got to ask is where are they coming from because typically when somebody is asking you a question like that or saying oh you're a you're gonna be a failure or you're making the worst mistake of your life they're not totally concerned about you it might seem that way but the reality is that they're not scared for you they're scared because they can't fathom putting themselves in your situation maybe they don't want to take the risk that you're getting ready to take especially parents right i know parents do that a lot they want to protect us they want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and we're thinking things through and all that fun stuff in this case you know where are they coming from why are they saying this you know why are they saying you're making the biggest mistake of your life what does it really matter i mean is, is that really protecting me <laughs> or is that making me think that i don't know what i'm doing i haven't really thought this thing through this is, if i haven't made this abundantly clear like this was not an overnight decision like this is something i had spent I want to say at least five months, maybe six months planning before I actually made the move. You have to ask yourself, where are they coming from? Is it their past experiences? Is it something that happened in their life where it didn't work out? So now they're kind of just putting that on you, you know, trying to protect themselves. So the second question you have to ask is, what if they're right? 
what if the claims that they're making, the questions that they're asking, what they're implying is right? So in my case, what if they're right that I am making the biggest mistake of my life, the biggest mistake of my career? It's, it's easy to stop right there. It's easy to hear those words, to hear that self-doubt and make it truth. You want to believe it. Like you, you start thinking, yeah, I am making a crazy decision. Like I've not thought this through. I mean, you start doubting yourself and you start believing what these people think about you, what they say about you. And then their truth becomes your truth. But don't just stop at their claim or their accusations or their beliefs. Ask yourself, what if they are right? What does that mean? So in my case, I thought about what if I'm, what if I am making the worst decision of my career? What does that really mean? So I'm leaving this firm that I, I don't feel like is, that fits my vision anymore. I'm going to go start my own firm and I'm going to gain amazing experience because I'm getting ready to do something that I've never done before. And most people don't do because there's a lot of risk involved and it's very scary and there's a lot of uncertainty. I mean, there's so many things that could happen, but what if they're right and I, I'm making a bad decision and my firm fails, then, then what? Then I go out and get another job. Then I go and try to work for another firm. That like, It's not the end of the world. So just because somebody makes a claim or they have a belief about what they think is going to happen to you. So answer the question, if they are right, then go through those scenarios of the plan B's or the plan B, the plan C, the plan D, if that is the truth. And I think that you'll see that even if they are right, it's not the end of the world. There are other options out there. Just because they think that you're making the wrong decision or they have a belief that you should be doing whatever they think is the right thing, that's not the only way to do it. So the third and final thing, finally getting home, get to play with my MacBook Pro again, excited about that. But the third question that you want to ask, you know, first we're asking, you know, where are they coming from? Like what's making them ask these questions? Second question is, what if they're right? All right, so the third question is, what if they're wrong? What if they're wrong with the beliefs they have about yourself? So once again, applying that back in my situation, what if they're wrong and me starting my own financial planning firm is not the worst decision, but the best decision of my career? What if I absolutely crush it and I open doors that I didn't even know were there to be open because of all the opportunities that are, I'm gonna come across because I put myself out there, because I did something that they didn't have the courage to do. What if, what if they are wrong? Now, the cool thing and the exciting thing about this story is that, guess what? They were wrong. They were wrong. I didn't have the proof back then that they were wrong, but I knew it. I knew it in my gut. I just knew it. Like knowing myself, like I do not fail. Like I will not quit. I will fight. I will hustle. I will do whatever it takes. And that's exactly what I did. So I'm proud to say that they were wrong and I'm glad that I didn't let them dictate my future because if I would have let their self doubts creep in my head, then I would have stayed. I would have stayed at a firm and I would have made decent money. I would have been successful, but not nearly the amount of success and the type of success that I have, the type of freedom that I have now because I didn't let them infect me. So where are you at in your life? Are you letting others, your parents, coworkers, friends, affect what you think about yourself, making you not believe in yourself, making you second guess yourself, don't let that happen. Do not let it happen. If you have a passion or desire that you want to accomplish, how are you going to know unless you take a chance? How do you know unless you take a chance on yourself? So I want to know one of two things. One, have you taken that chance? Have you taken that risk? When somebody else thought something else about you where they didn't think that you're going to make it, but you showed them wrong, I want to hear your story below. Or maybe you're in the other boat to where you're not sure if you want to take that action because you got somebody else creeping up in your mind making you second guess yourself. If that's you, I wanna hear your story. What are you thinking about doing? What do you want to do? But somebody's making you think differently. I wanna hear your story. And always, if you wanna like this, like away, subscribe, all that good stuff. But most importantly, I wanna hear your story. I wanna hear 
where you're at in your life and what big decision are you contemplating and what are you struggling with? Let me know your story in the comments below. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that, you know what? I'm not reminding you anything. You go out and do what you know you need to do. Peace out. So answer the question, you know, with, ah! So answer the question, so, really? So answer the question, if they are right, then start walking down those scenarios that, okay, if they are right, then what other... Ah!